So I don't know about you guys, but I feel like March is the most boring month out of the year. Next to February. However, I do think some of the most important people in my life are born in March, and I also read some amazing books in March, which I'm going to show to you now. At the beginning of March I read a lot of short stories, like kind of small books, and then I kind of worked my way into like sequels and other novels, so I'll show those to you now. The first book I read in March was Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a classic, and it is a very interesting classic. It's kind of World War II, but it also deals with aliens. I think I enjoyed it. I believe I gave it like four stars. It has a lot of um, black humor, satiric voice, and incomparable imagination is quoted on the back. If you're looking for a very short, interesting read, I would recommend Kurt Vonnegut. I think he has a bunch of other books, but this is the most well-known, and one of my friends read it and really liked it, so that's why I decided to give it a go. The next book I read was also another short story, and that is The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. For some reason, I thought that this was a sequel slash companion book to the novel Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, and actually it's not. This is just a short story. It's a short fantasy story all in itself, and it's absolutely amazing. If you look at Brandon Sanderson's books and you realize that they're like a thousand pages long and you're like wow that's really hard to get into his writing since his books are a thousand pages long, maybe you should start with this if you want to try getting into his writing style. This is only like what a hundred and like seventy pages and it's fantasy, it's beautiful, I mean 170 pages and he completely developed world characters, you know, magic, a whole bunch of other stuff. I love this, I give it five stars like I do with most Brandon Sanderson books. I love how Brandon Sanderson can do so much with like so little pages and still do the same amount of work with like a thousand pages. The plot of the story is kind of weird, basically you can kind of forge your soul which is very illegal and the Emperor is kind of brain dead so they need this woman who is an illegal person, okay, not illegal, she's a prisoner, she's not an illegal person, she's not like an alien or anything, but they need her to do her illegal stuff and forge a soul for the Emperor so war doesn't break out. So yes, the Emperor's soul. I am highly recommending this to everyone who wants to get into Brandon Sanderson's writing but are kind of intimidated by his thousand page count. The next book I read in March was She Is Mine and this is written by Stephanie Fast. This is a true story. It's about an orphan in South Korea and her journey of how she literally almost died like a thousand times because it was a terrible time period like after World War II I think. And she was abandoned because she was half white and half Korean and I don't know if it's still like that now but in that time period no one wants these children. They just like get rid of them. This is a true story. This is fact. Um, the woman Stephanie Fast, she's like in her 60s now, I don't know, but she wrote the story in second person as opposed to first person because she feels like this is the story of several orphans in Korea. She is telling everyone else's story, but just the way it happened to her. And this was amazing. It was phenomenal just seeing her journey and how she was pulled through all of this. It just blew me away. If you're looking for kind of a nonfiction but not a nonfiction, I would recommend this. It's very powerful. If you're into other cultures and you want to know more about Korea, I feel like this would be a good place to start. Once again, the title is She Is Mine. It's a war orphan story written by Stephanie Fast. The next book I read was an actual full-length novel. Not that those weren't, but they were kind of small and different. And that is A Gathering of Shadows by Victoria Schwab. Five stars, guys. Five stars. For those of you who don't know, A Gathering of Shadows is a sequel to A Darker Shade of Magic, and if the covers of these books do not make you want to read it, I don't know what is wrong with you. I'm sorry, I've been known to pick up books by their covers. I'm just that kind of person. So this is the sequel. If you don't know what it's about, it's about parallel Londons, and it's written by Victoria Schwab, and this guy travels back and forth between them, between red, black, white, and gray London, and this woman gets entangled up with him, and there's kings and queens, and just wonderful, wonderful stuff. There's also pirates, so these books are amazing. They continue to be amazing. The second book was good, and I am so ready for the third book. This is the first time that Victoria Schwab has ever left us on a cliffhanger, and let me tell you, this is one intense cliffhanger. Like, almost Mark of Athena worthy, depending on how invested in the story you are. I need the third book, I need the title, I need the cover, I just need the book itself because I am dying. Victoria Schwab, guys, you need to pick her up if you haven't. The next book I read was another Brandon Sanderson book because I can't seem to go two minutes without reading a Brandon Sanderson book, and that is Calamity. This is the third and final book to the Reckoner series. The first book is Steelheart, the second book is Firefight, and this is Calamity. This is Brandon Sanderson's only young adult dystopian, and it's kind of a superhero story with all of these underdogs that kind of get mixed into it. There's very interesting political intrigue and like power complexes. If I'm recommending Brandon Sanderson, I don't know if I'd recommend this first. But that's me. I love dystopian, but it's not my favorite. Nevertheless, this was a wonderful conclusion. It answered all the questions, and 
ironically, it made me cry near the end with just like one scene. Not even one scene, like one word. Like we find out who this person is in like this other world and if you read the book you know who I'm talking about. And just when I read those words I just like cried immediately because I don't know, like this book really wraps you into the story and it wraps you into the world and just reading that scene, just one sentence, I had not cried this whole people had died and I had not cried the whole trilogy, but I just read like this the end of one chapter and I found out who this person was and I just... I cried. <laughs> so yes, calamity, breaking my heart as usual. The next book I read was Blue Lily Lily Blue and this is written by Maggie Steve Otter. This is the third book in the Raven Boy series and I am surprised by how much I am continuing, continually, continuing to like this series. Please edit my face because I don't know what that sentence I just said was. The Raven Boys is a very strange and interesting series. Um, it has kind of a King Arthur Rising vibe, but it's with this king called Glendower. And yeah, the, it just perplexes me, the whole magic system and how these characters, these characters work off each other really well. This is not a stereotypical novel. I mean, you could place these characters into stereotypes if you wanted to, but I think they would break out of them fairly easily. So yeah, I think that's why I keep moving on with this. It's really not my kind of my thing. I'm, it's more, I don't want to say paranormal, but it's more fantasy, realistic, with maybe a hint of paranormal. I don't like paranormal, I hate paranormal, but I love fantasy. There's kind of a difference between there. So it's got this weird balance with like a hint of paranormal, a lot of fantasy, magical realism, and the characters are great, and the story's great, and I am excited to see how this concludes, and Gansey cannot die. End of story. And the last book that I read in March was a book I had read a long time ago as a kid, and I'm gonna recommend it to everyone now, and that is Aurelia's Colors by Jeffrey Overstreet. For those of you who don't know, this book is about a king who banishes all the colors. Well, actually it's the queen, but the queen is gone slash insane. So yes, the king slash queen banished all of the colors. You're not allowed to wear certain colors, you're not allowed to have certain colors. If you have these colors, you have to give them to the palace, because the palace has to be the envy of all the other nations. But there's this girl, an orphan, named Aurelia, and she's raised outside the palace in the forest with all these gatherers. And she collects all these colors, and she is just amazing with how she exists and defies the king. So it's kind of about her pretty much bringing this kingdom down. Um, there's also a side, side well, so many side stories, there's so many good stories in here, there's a lot of different characters and I like how they all tie in with her but they all still tie together. There's the prince, there's the crazy king who isn't all that crazy, there's this captain of the guard who you kind of hate but then he's still a human because you really love how much he loves his wife and his daughter. There's like the gatherer peoples, there's this little ale boy who runs throughout the whole story. It's a very different wonderful story. There are three more books after this and I'm gonna recommend you this to you now because I don't think it's a very well-known series. So yes, these are all the books that I read in the month of March. Let me know if you have heard of any of these books and which of these are your favorite in the comments. My name is Josie, thank you for watching, and I will see you next month. Or possibly sooner, I am in the process of moving my house and all of my belongings, so video making is kind of at a strange standstill. So I might see you soon, but if not, I will see you in my April wrap-up. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later.